Oh, so today I'll be uh, presenting this paper called Human Match Recovery from Multiple Shots. This was published in CBPR 2022. It's a bit old paper, but it's a hugely influential paper in this field. So that's why I decided to present this paper today. The main contribution of the paper is the proposed an optimization method called multiple shot optimization framework for reconstructing 3D human mesh sequences from movies. Uh, what it does basically is uh, in movies, let's say, for example, here in movies, a car that can be in multiple scenes. But when you're taking a shot for a temporal learning scenario, you need more information. So let's say, the scene is defined on the camera perspective. So in the first, in the example here, the first three scene are from the same camera perspective and second two scenes are from different camera perspective and third uh, three scenes are from another camera perspective. So these are counted as three shots in a temporal uh, learning scenario. The problem we have with a traditional uh, data set is in traditional scenario, they will consider these three as a one shot and reconstruct images, reconstruct uh, meshes for these three scenes. And they, they will consider these two as a separate scenes also, a separate shows also. Problem happens where when you have less information like this, we don't have the information of the whole body compared to here. So when you have uh, such truncated image when you reconstruct the meshes, it doesn't have the, doesn't have the other information. So when we put the shape parameter and post parameter in the CPL, it sometimes can produce uh, altered results. So it will not uh, the model will not be optimized properly for the CPL parameter since the CPL parameter is for whole body and we are not getting information of whole body then. For or these particular two scenes, it might not uh, be able to reconstruct whole body mesh properly. And also, like here, for these scenes, like the information about face is not as detailed as these two scenes. So we can combine these two scenes information with the these scenes of information to get better. Uh, knowledge about the whole scenes uh, or the person to reconstruct whole scenes. So in this paper, they proposed a method, uh, more specifically an optimization method, uh, to combine all these shots together to create one large sequence. So this is the main contribution of the paper. So other than that, uh, so I talked about this and this, and they also, in this paper, the first introduced transformer in 3D reconstruction scenarios. So prior to this work, previously they were using convolutional neural network or recurrent neural network. So in this work, they used a transformer for the first time. So what is multi-shot optimization? So multi-shot optimization is a procedure which is used to recover consistent 3D motion sequence across shot changes set in the videos, like we discussed before. It addresses the challenge of uh, temporal fragmentation and partial human in the video frame. So, uh, like in the second uh, shot we have seen in the earlier uh, sequence. It recovers long 3D motion sequence from the movies and serves as a source of pseudo ground truth and 3D training data. So what it means is in this optimization method, they create pseudo ground truth for all the uh, scenes, like this is one scene, this is one scene, this is another scene. So they create 3D pseudo ground truth for all the uh, scenes here based on all the information. So this creates more detailed ground truth, which uh, helps model to be a far more optimized for more in general situation. So the problem with First problem we have uh, in this optimization method to solve is when you're taking a long sequence of scenes, 
there might be uh, in, uh, there might be seeds where the person of interest might not be available in that particular scene. Let's say in this example here we have Ross and Monica. Let's say Ross is the person of interest in this scenario, but in these uh, two scenes, Ross isn't available. Monica is available. So we have to somehow specify in which scenes which character is available. So. For this, they do two, two three things. Uh, the first, uh, uh, use a 2D pose estimator like open pose or alpha pose to track the poses in, in the sequence, to track if the same person is available in all the scenes. If the same person is available, they mark, as, mark something out, or if the same person is unavailable, they mark something else. But one problem with this uh, 2D post tracker is even if it's uh, accurate in most of the time, sometimes it might not be as good as the other method like a uh, short detection algorithm when the shot is changing, the camera perspective is changing. In, like in uh, the camera perspective changes in huge degrees, then the algorithm uh, to, uh, 2D join. Uh, Tracking algorithm might not be efficient to detect the same human in multiple camera, uh, multiple seats. So, to remedy this situation, they use a short detection algorithm, which uh, detects if multiple scenes are from same shot or different shot, and personal identification network. So, it the network I think uh, the network identifies if the person, same person, is in the other scene or the if same person is not available in the other scene. So using these three methods like uh to the post tracker and short detection algorithm and person identification network, they can track the scene changes uh in the whole sequence. So for the optimization they have following objectives. So they have defined two smoothness terms. One is for joint position, to the joint position. Another one is for both post parameters for a SMPL. The smoothness term for joint position measure, measures the difference between canonical joint points and canonical joint position of two consecutive frames. This is uh, self-explanatory. The smoothness term for body post parameters measures difference between the post parameter of two consecutive frames, that's also self-explanatory. So that just calculates the difference between pose and shapes of uh, different scenes and calculates the difference. And uh, some of these objectives is, these two objectives are optimized through whole sequence. And then for the whole sequence, for, uh, there are many scenes. For each scenes, they return. Uh, these model parameters, uh, joint, uh, to the joint position and the body post parameters. So using this optimization method, they created a data set on the top of another data set. We, this is, they created a data set on AVA data set, which, in uh, which data set they basically give longer sequences of scenes. So the, for example, here, if it was in a data dataset, up until here, it would be considered as one scene. But after using that optimization method, we can use multiple shots as the same scene. So we can use a whole longer scenes, like up to from here to here, for the training of the temporal model, which will have which will have more information. And so it will help the model to be better optimized for a general in more in general situation. For the data set, they also have given one model. Uh, so the model is a temporal model. For the temporal model, they first defined a single frame model. For the single frame model, they took the HMR model, the basic HMR model, the existing HMR model, and they just changed the uh, loss of that uh, model. For the loss of that model, they first uh, predicted the 2D joint position and body shape parameter. 
And for the ground truth, they use the optimized uh, 2D Jovan's position and uh, 3D uh, body shape parameters from this algorithm. So we will get the optimized parameter for each frame here, right? So from this, from the, the optimizer will return the model parameters for each frame. So the, for the ground truth, they used the optimized parameters from this amount of shock optimization algorithm. And then for the temporal model, they took the single frame model and used, used it for all the scenes in one sequence and trained the uh, model basically. So in the model, they have two inputs. One is this uh, image and the ID based, ID based tension, I guess it says. So what, what it means is for each frame, they say, if the person of interest is available, if the person of interest is available, they identify that frame as one. If the person of interest is not available, like here, they identify that frame as zero. So when the person of interest is not available, they don't use the self-attention. So what they say, if they train the model in such a way, the model will be optimized. The self-attention of the model will be optimized in a way that it will learn to ignore the frames of the sequence if the person of interest is not available. So even if the sequence, whole sequence is given to the model, it will learn to ignore Monica if the Ross is if Ross is person of interest uh, for the sequence. So this is basic description of the temporal model. So the temporal model they use uh, the encoder from single frame uh, framework uh, from the previous step, and uh, they also input sequence of frames and embeddings from the single frame framework. And also, like I said before, it's associated with the scalar value, which indicates if the person is present or not present in the frame. One more thing. So since transformer is translation invariant, so they have to put a positional embedding, which will rectify the sequence of the frames, if the, uh, the, the time flow of the frame. So then transformer cannot detect the sequence uh, like CNN. So, we have to give the positional embedding. So they give the positional embedding there. And like I discussed before, if the self-attention computation ignores if the person of interest is available. So at the end, the self-attention mechanism learns how to ignore those frames in inference time after it's getting properly trained. Uh, for each frame, the, so here, they are taking uh, embedding from all the scenes here. So they use the steep connection to connect all the frames to, to get the final output this way. There is residual connection for each frames here. So this is the result of the model. So in a multi-frame evaluation on AVA data set, they showed when they use transformer, it outperforms convolutional neural network and recurrent neural network in most of the situations. Also, they train it on the partial human data set. Also here, they have outperformed all the existing models. Uh, and the, the model even from better when they use their own data set. Also, in, even in single frame, uh, that is single frame scenario. Their model performs better if they use their data set here. I also use their optimization method. These are some quality results. So what it means basically is if you are using more frames, it has more information. So the reconstructed meshes are more precise, like it's shown here. Like here, the meshes are not most precise one. So, but here, when they use multiple shots, the meshes are more precise. Also here, the 
so the other this is the uh this is the comparison between other temporal learning methods so the temporal learning method using their optimization method performs all the other methods all the other existing methods so that was it for me thank you